just wanted to thank Amy for coming tonight. You don't know how hard it was for her. When she got off at Democracy Now! today at 9 o'clock, she had to do 10 book signings. She spoke at about 20 colleges, covered two revolutions. She's only here for a little while. She's heading up to the 92nd Street Y, where she's meeting with Seymour Hersh, and they're going to discuss about us bombing Iran next week. Now, do you remember uh, Democracy Now!, when it first started, how great it was at the ending? It used to be, this show was produced by Amy Goodman, Bernard White, and Juan Gonzalez. Amy now has to end the show a half hour into the show with all the credits that are coming on. Between the satellite, the TV, the 500 stations, community radio, internet. I mean, it's unbelievable. And probably Amy's greatest interview was with uh, Clinton. Do you remember that? Well, we got another Clinton running. Does anyone foresee that happening, calling up the station? I think Hillary will be talking to Monica Lewinsky before she's going to be talking to Amy Goodman. And you know Bush is not going to call in because, you know, Bush is going to say the world's a safer place. Do you know when the world was a safer place? When Bush was drinking, snorting coke, and chasing women. That's when the world was safe because he was in the service at the time. There was a war on. He didn't want to go. He was partying. He was snorting. He was running around. But then a very sad thing happened. He found Jesus. Now, that was a sad day for America and the world. But... Even that he did ask backwards. Now, in America, we have rules and regulations. You just can't, no Tom, Dick, and Mohammed can go out and just find Jesus. What you have to do first is become a serial killer. You get caught, you go to jail, get convicted, find Jesus, and then get executed. So what does he do? He finds Jesus, becomes a serial killer. We can only hope he gets arrested as a war criminal and then gets executed. So that's, that's what we're hoping for. Now, I, I, the, you'll see Fox behind me here. I, I started a thing. I drive a yellow cab, and there was a terrorist convention that was being held here about four years ago. You might remember it. Terrorists from all over America, terrorists that blow up abortion clinics, that drag African Americans from pickup trucks, that tie homosexuals' defenses, they were all coming to town for this huge terrorist convention. It was called the Republican National Convention. <laughs> And the head terrorist was in town, George Bush. But on Fox television, uh, Bill O'Reilly, that great Irish American, was interviewing Michael Moore. And he said to, Michael Moore said to him, he said, would you send your kids to Iraq? And Bill O'Reilly said, no, but I would go. That brought a tear to my eyes. So what a patriot. So I gathered about 10 cab drivers. And I said, you know, he's been on for the past week. He still hasn't went. Maybe he can't find Kennedy. So we went down to the Fox Hall on 6th Avenue. We lined up the cabs, and we had a press conference, and we held up a thing for the uh, Republican convention that we were handing out a free cab ride to anybody that wants to fight for my freedom. I said it was the least I could do for the war effort. So we walked into Fox Station. Security grabbed us. I said, send this up to Bill O'Reilly. We got the ride outside. And I said, while I'm there, give this one to Sean Hannity. He might need a ride. And you know what? Give one to Rush Limbaugh. We'll take him to Afghanistan. The dope's cheaper there. He might like that. <laughs> So what happened, and anybody, you know, that lives here in America, the greatest phone call you can ever receive is from Rupert Murdoch's Fox Television. So I got the call from Fox Television. and said, would you mind coming on to Fox Television? I said, this is it. I can finally get out of the cab. I'll be an expert in something. They said, will you talk about the traffic? I said, yes. Will you talk about Republicans and how they tip? I said, I will do that and more. <laughs> so they send out the... Uh, the car for me or whatever, a town car. It wasn't quite a limousine. So I'm in Queens waving to everyone like I, I gave the papal wave as I'm going through the neighborhood. Through the Midtown Tunnel, I get down to the foxhole. I get to the green room, and I end up on this show called Neil Cavuto. But prior to that, I was on Democracy Now! that morning with Amy because Amy was covering all the different protests around the city. So I get down into the green room, and it's all these financial guys in suits, and I'm dressed sort of like how I'm dressed now. And then they go, uh, you have to go for makeup. And do your hair. So I'm sitting down there, and this is Yenta from Brooklyn. So why are you here? I said, I'm here to protest against Bush. Why? He's a great man. What did he ever do? I said, let's start with the war. And then she looks at me, and she goes, where were you on September 11th? I said, I was the 20th hijacker. I missed the flight that day. What do you mean, where was I? 
So now you can see everybody in the green room's like looking at me. I said, so I sit down there, I got my little notes and I'm watching. They said, all right, John McDonough, you got five minutes. So everybody's sitting with Neil Cavuto in the room, like a studio. So it comes up, they said, you're up. And I said, oh, like, can I sit across from Neil? They said, no, you're going to a separate studio. But I said, Neil's right there. He's a nice guy. Let me sit in front of him. No. So they take me about 100 yards down. They put me into a separate studio, put on an earpiece, and I have to stare into a, like a camera. And you hear him through this, and it's very disorienting. Now, what I'm going to do, I was supposed to be on for five minutes. I lasted one minute and 50 seconds. <laughs> and uh, my career at Fox went up in smoke. But if you can watch on the video, down here, uh, while I'm on, it says, Osama bin Laden's driver has been charged in Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> and then in the right-hand corner, ACT UP had a demonstration that day where they stripped naked and blocked 8th Avenue. So now if you were going by the television and the sound was off, there's old John McDonough driving Osama bin Laden, and when he's not doing that, he's stripping naked on 8th Avenue and blocking traffic. So... This is my one minute and 50 seconds of fame on Fox television. All right, welcome back, everyone. Well, you would think with thousands of delegates descending on Manhattan next week, the cabbies would be going gaga. They're not. John McDonough now has been driving a cab in the Big Apple since 1977. It says that next week is going to be the biggest mess he's ever seen. So, John, you're not too psyched. Why not? Well, uh, because of all these so-called security precautions that are going around Manhattan and diverting the traffic everywhere, and I think uh, Bloomberg is set up where uh, some of the delegates will be able to come in from the airports for free. We just wish that uh, they use some of the money that they have from the war profits from Halliburton and Bechtel and do a little trickle-down economy down to the cab drivers. All right, so I take it you're not a fan of the Republicans. No, we're organizing a protest against Republicans. We're asking cab drivers to turn their lights on and shine the light on Bush and also, passengers getting into the yellow taxis to ask the driver to turn on the headlights and do a protest for the four days that the Republicans are in town. What if they already have daytime running lights anyway? I guess uh, none of the cabs. They're Crown they Victorias. Okay. There's 11,000 of them. They don't have the lights on. So if you do see a cab uh, during those four days with the lights on, it'll be there protesting the Bush administration and his policies probably in Iraq. So there were no similar uh, protests like this when the Democrats gathered in Boston? Uh, I drive out of New York. I don't know what they were doing up in Boston. But this is what we're organizing here in New York City. All right, John, w it, would you pick up a Republican delegate if he or she needed a ride? Oh, of course. And yeah. also, we're giving out a free coupon to anybody that wants to fight the war in Iraq. Uh, if they get that patriotic fervor during a convention, we'll give them a free ride to the airport uh, if they want to go to Baghdad and fight for my freedom. I think it'll be a very worthy cause. It'll help us to help the war uh, situation. And we'll be glad to take anyone to the airport that wants to fight on my behalf. John, is there anything this president has done that you like? Uh, not in the last four years, and I don't okay. want to see him in the next four years. All right, well, you made that abundantly clear. John, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. No problem. All right, now, if angry cabbies isn't enough, the GOP convention I planners are saying I don't no know why you're board. cheering. I lost a good job that day. I could have been an expert that any time a cab driver had an accident or was shot dead, I could have been the expert dragged out. And here we have retired cab driver. We'll be speaking about the industry. So now when that happened, the doors kicked open. Everyone came running into the room, the earpieces pulled down, and I go, hey, fellas, how was I, right? <laughs> so normally what happens when that's over, you go back to the green room and you wash everything off, and they said, oh, you were very good, very good. So I'm walking down this little aisle, and I'm doing my tricky dick. Hey, how am I doing? And every, all these fox heads are all looking up at me. So now I'm thinking to myself, you know, they're not letting me back there. They had security come down, and they were escorting me out. I was let out of there like an al-Qaeda suspect in Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> so now I'm thinking to myself, oh, man, the cab is still out there. They're, somebody's going to get to the phone and cancel it. So now I go running. So now I got about 10 security guys running after me. Now, they don't know why I'm running, but I said, I got to get out to 6th Avenue now. So I bolt out there. Thank God the cab was there. Took me back to Queens, and needless to say, I've never been invited back to Fox since. But I have been on Democracy Now! since.